My name is Mark Hallett. Uh, today is October 30th, 2010, and uh, we are here at the International Federation of Clinical Neurophysiology meeting in Kobe, and I have the opportunity of uh, discussing with uh, Dr. Masaya uh, Sagawa, uh, who is uh, one of the most distinguished members of the Movement Disorder Society. And uh, we want to discuss with him about uh, how he uh, got interested in neurology and uh -huh. movement disorders. And we start out by uh, asking you to uh, tell us about your early life, uh, <laughs> where you were born, and uh, how you got uh, interested in going into the field of medicine. I see. Okay. Yeah. I'm born in Tokyo, mm -hmm. and uh, my family is a traditional pediatrician. Mm -hmm. I am a ninth generation. The first generation is a uh, uh, doctor of the one samurai. He, he, he was, uh, at first, he examined child care without fee. This was the start of the uh, pediatrician. It was around uh, 18, uh, 17, uh, uh, 19, uh, um, most Edo area. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very, uh, uh, I so, so, so everyone has been a pediatrician. Yes. So I am a ninth pediatrician. So I must go to uh, uh, be a pediatrician at first. I see. Yeah. And and your family has lived in only one place in Tokyo? I, uh, oh, yes, one place of Tokyo. Uh -huh. One place in Tokyo. Yes, yes. Tell us about that uh, place, because that's also a famous place, I guess. Uh, uh, not famous, but it was uh, Ochanan's area and uh -huh. Hongo area we have. Mm -hmm. And you still own that property, I guess. Is that right? Property? Uh, own a property. Yes, you actually still uh, have this house in Tokyo. Oh, right? yes. yes. Uh, the house is uh, yes, the uh, built house. by uh, my uh, great-grandfather of uh, grandmother's side. Mm -hmm. uh, he was uh, not a uh, doctor. He was a uh, professor of uh, architecture of uh, Tokyo University, mm -hmm. and he built the house mm -hmm. in I this see. area. Uh -huh. So going back to uh, being interested in mm. pediatrics then, so everyone was a pediatrician, yes. so it was just natural for you also to be a pediatrician. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm on the label to be a pediatrician. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, I see. So, uh, uh, thank you. Uh -huh. mm. So where did you go to medical school? Yes, I, uh, Tokyo University Medical School. Mm -hmm. And when I entered the uh, medical school in the, uh, yes, it's uh, uh, ages of uh, 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 Mm -hmm. uh, in pediatric uh, department at that time is a very f famous neurologist, uh, Professor Fukuyama, mm -hmm. Arima, and so on. And I follow them. And at first, my study in the neurology is uh, long to uh, concentrate the neuropathy, uh, congenital muscle dystrophy, which was mm -hmm. found by Dr. Fukuyama. Mm -hmm. I'm aware to. Uh, uh, to clarify this dystonia, uh, this, uh, no, no, this disease as mm -hmm. uh, dystrophy, because they have uh, mental retardation, high, higher cortical dysfunction, so uh, it was a problem whether this was a dystonia or not, and this, uh, this uh, muscle dystrophy or not. I so examined the histochemistry mm -hmm. and clarified this was uh, uh, con congenital dystrophy with central nervous system involvement. Mm -hmm. uh, so you had said that your whole family had been doing pediatrics, yeah. but uh, were they also interested in the neurological aspects of pediatrics, or uh, mm, uh, were you yeah. the first person to, to get involved not in so, pediatric uh, neurology? Not so uh, uh, concentrate uh, the pediatrics, uh, but uh, my late grandfather 
first described the tension headache in Japan, mm -hmm. and uh, my mm -hmm. grandfather, uh, uh, so to say, uh, uh, makes the like disease at that time, and my father mm -hmm. examined the uh, 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 tighter uh, um, antibodies uh, of the uh, Japanese encephalitis. Mm -hmm. And so the main patients, many, uh, uh, almost, almost all the part, uh, people in the Honshu and uh, Skok and Kyushu uh, district uh, suffer from Japanese encephalitis. So uh, he says uh, it is no need to use the uh, vaccine for uh, Japanese encephalitis. Almost all of okay. Uh, the uh, person who are living in the Honshu district might have some uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, tighter mm -hmm. of this one. Mm -hmm. I see. So there was clearly some other neurological interest yes. then, uh, yeah. prior to you as mm -hmm. well. Did, when you were uh, growing up, did you uh, work with your father sometime in his office? Did you go to visit him? No, it, no time. <laughs> no time <laughs> to do that. <laughs> because uh, our family, uh -huh. able to, uh, second uh, generation, uh -huh. says, uh, 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 criticize the uh, 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 former generation. Uh, uh -huh. It was no time, past that. So, and they <laughs> came, uh, uh -huh. followed the hospital. Uh -huh. So I, I know that that's the same field. But uh -huh. I'm for the, uh, uh, Neurology, we uh, start, but uh, as for the uh, movement disorder, mm -hmm. uh, I have a chance to learn the basal uh, disease in Dr. Narabayashi's clinic. Mm -hmm. I see. Once a week. It I was see. very important for me. I see. Mm -hmm. So when did you start to do that? Uh, it was uh, ah, the second grade of the uh, theater uh, mm -hmm. So it was. Uh, 1965, mm -hmm. yes. and at that time, the old Dr. Nanabayashi uh, uh, clinic is a uh, uh, very uh, top level stereotactic op operation. Mm -hmm. So we can, I, I can examine the various kinds of movement disorder, uh, the clinical finds, and also the target of the uh, uh, stereotactic operation, so mm -hmm. the neuron level uh, uh, critical examination. Yes. So, so at that time, uh, was he operating on children, uh, and and that's how you got interested? Because I would have thought that uh -huh. many of his operations were on adults. Yes, adults. But uh, 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 there uh, are the many uh, young onset, uh, so to say, juvenile Parkinsonism, and also. Mm -hmm. He uh, done in the operation of uh, cerebral palsy. I see. Uh -huh. So, uh, and how old were the children that he was operating on then? Uh, at that time, uh, more than 15 years of age. Mm -hmm. Because he is very anxious about so the development of the basal ganglia, mm -hmm. so he didn't do it in so young children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Uh, and so you got involved with his clinic. How did you first meet him? Uh, or how did you get involved with Professor Narapayashi? Uh, at that time, uh, when I entered in, uh, the uh, pediatric department and in, belonged to the neurology group, one day Dr. Narapayashi came to the professor of uh, pediatrics, uh, Dr. Uh, professor Takatsu. He said, uh, uh, his uh, young Dr. Segawa, to uh, come to uh, his clinic once a week. He asked Professor Takasu. Uh -huh. So I had a chance. Uh -huh. uh, it was a very chance to, for me. I happy see. For me. I see. So, so that's how you got interested in movement disorders yes. by. Uh, 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 At that time, uh, uh, Dr. Nair was a very famous uh, neurophysiologist mm -hmm. and also a neuro uh, neurologist. So, uh, Dr. Shimazu and also uh, Dr. Uh, Yanagisawa mm -hmm. and Dr. Yoshida is already you know, uh, gathering that uh, mm -hmm. clinic. So, 
Mm-hmm. I have a way in happy to learn many mm-hmm. things from mm-hmm. these neurologists now, and neurophysiologists. Right. Now, at that time, uh, were you at one of the universities? Were you a part of the faculty of one of the universities, or were you in private practice at that time? At the university. Uh, the university. Through the 1973, mm-hmm. I, I work in, in the university clinic. I see. Which university were you working? Tokyo University. Tokyo University. Uh-huh. And then after that, you uh, had your own clinic, I guess. Is yes. that right? As I understand yeah. it. Mm-hmm. So uh, tell us about. Uh, so from the very beginning, then you were interested in doing research. Yeah. Yeah. How did you get interested in doing research as well as doing pediatric neurology? How, how did you? Why did you decide to to, uh-huh. to, to do research as well? I see. Yes, I think the, when uh, when get entering the uh, when attending the uh, uh, or studying Dr. Nanabe's clinic, a clinical study is very important. Mm-hmm. What is only with precise clinical examination could uh, clarify the locus of the one. At the same time, the neuropathologist, Professor Siraki, he is very strict one, and when uh, some case is autopsy, uh, he says, if you uh, don't say any precise clinical symptoms, I didn't uh, say anything for the pathophysiological findings. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, uh, the clinical study, uh, clinical, uh, precise clinical examination is very important. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, I rather concentrate the clinical study. Uh-huh. Right. Uh-huh. So, uh, then, uh, what was your first project in mm-hmm. terms of research when you were getting interested in movement disorders? Uh-huh. Yeah, what was the first thing that you... Yes. First thing uh, that you studied? Mm, first thing uh, is uh, for... I had a chance to meet a patient mm-hmm. later to be a fellow at ah, okay. uh, In 1970, when the girl came to me, uh, she had a friend, chief complaints, the gait disturbance. Mm-hmm. For her, uh, the gait abnormality is not marked in the morning, but later in the afternoon, mm-hmm. uh, she can't walk at all. Mm-hmm. At that time, uh, we, uh, I think it might be a fatigability, so I wondering if it was a milestone exam. So, so we examined the, the EMG and tension test for mm-hmm. this one, but it's negative. And when we examined her in the afternoon, uh, we, uh, I realized the gait disturbance caused by uh, hypertones, lead hypertones. Mm-hmm. So, uh, as I have already done the uh, clinical examination of the basal uh, ganglion disease in Dr. Nanabaisman, uh, I think it might be this case. May, might be the Parkinson-like, mm-hmm. but the dystonia-like symptoms mm-hmm. in the afternoon. So, uh, this was caused by, and also, this was improved by sleep. Mm-hmm. Uh, it might be a central nervous system of the monkey, so decrease of dopamine in the uh, afternoon might be related to the symptom. Ah, so, so, so that was a very clever set of uh, <laughs> observations and thinking yeah. about this. Yes. So, so what uh, did you do then? So you yeah, I uh, 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 make them uh, admission and. Uh, uh, try to use levodopa. Mm-hmm. At that time, levodopa is the first. Uh, is can, we can't get levodopa easily, but Dr. Nanabais kindly <laughs> gave oh, uh, some uh, <laughs> uh, drugs, so, uh-huh. so it was very dramatic effect. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, at the same time, the cousin of him huh, also belonged to uh, entering, uh, uh, can, is one of the outpatient clinic of. Uh, uh, Tokyo University Pediatric Department. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I examined her and also the same one mm-hmm. and improved the develop. I see. Uh-huh. So uh, at that time I uh, showed the small conference, uh, which was the uh, conference of the effects of epidopa, uh, uh, inviting uh, 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 doctors and 
so uh, the under the barbo mm -hmm. at, at that time came to Japan and made such a conference. Uh -huh. At that time I uh, show the case, mm -hmm. and uh, it was uh, one kind of dystonia which responded to Evodopa. But at that time, uh, these the two uh, uh, child cases, so I'm uh, anxious about whether this may be a Parkinson's disease mm -hmm. in the adult world. Mm -hmm. So my first report, uh, this was uh, 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 progressive basal ganglia disease mm -hmm. with diurnal fluctuation. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. right. so, so what year was that publication? It was uh, 71 in so Japanese letters. Uh -huh. And then when did you publish it in English? Uh, English is, uh, yeah, uh, uh, 76. When uh, I have uh, Dr. Nawashi uh, recommended me to run as a speaker of the first Congress of Estonia, mm -hmm. uh, World Congress of Estonia. At the time, I, I, mm. in 1975, I think, uh, and then the, it was published. In mm -hmm. the proceeding, I write down. Mm -hmm. yes. Ah, I see. So, mm. that, so the symposium was in 1975, yes. and, the, and there was a publication in 1976. Six, yes. Ah, I see. At that time, but uh, at that time, uh, when I asked the uh, uh, mother of the children, uh, he said, she said that uh, one of the good points of a child is that uh, she has no need to take care of, of uh, put off their blanket uh, during sleep. Mm -hmm. They don't move at all during sleep. Uh -huh. So I uh, try to examine the body movement during sleep by polysomnograph. I see. Uh -huh. With three channel of EEG and but uh, uh, sixteen uh, EMG channels mm -hmm. uh, in the both upper and lower extremity and trunk muscles, uh -huh. we examine the gross movement. Gross movement is a uh, body movement, uh, uh, generalized body movement, continuing more than two seconds, and twitch movement restricted one muscle re uh, in, uh, less than zero point five seconds. We examine these ones. Mm -hmm. um, so at that time, you you still only had two patients. Two patients. Uh -huh. Right. And but later, uh -huh. uh, so the, we can uh, unfortunately get uh, many cases more than mm -hmm. uh, ten, uh, more near, near ten cases were coming. At that time, Tokyo University a very good condition. In the uh, most uh, uh, train come to Tokyo. Uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, the main patient come gather to the Tokyo University, right, right. <laughs> so uh -huh. we have a chance to examine uh, many, uh -huh. a lot of patients, so we easily find them. And <coughs> one uh, was very important one is uh, that uh, one uh, patient who uh, de developed the symptoms one and three months and come to us in you know, two years and improve complete uh, two and six years and six months and completely improved by three years. Uh, uh, she said, this tiny girl said, my grandma is the same as me. <laughs> so I, I examined her. Uh -huh. uh, she was uh, 51 years of age. Uh -huh. uh, for her, the symptoms look at eight years. So six forty-three years without any treatment. Mm -hmm. uh, by examining her, we uh, realized this was not Parkinson's disease of dystonia. I also asked Dr. Nalabais to examine her. Mm -hmm. He also uh, agreed with me this was dystonia uh, because uh, they, they have a hypertonus. But with uh, reflexes, mm -hmm. uh, this was not uh, plastic. This sometimes uh, uh, drop out, mm -hmm. and also they have uh, uh, tremor. But uh, they, the cognitivity was not observed. Mm -hmm. The tremor disappeared by stretch measurement. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think this was a dystonia. So uh, this was a hereditary problem of dystonia and published it in 1976. Mm -hmm. uh, I see, right, right. Now, uh, when did, uh, it was around this time that you left uh, the university and went into your own practice. Is that yes. right? Uh, what year was that again? You had mentioned it earlier. Uh, 
I thought right. they might further uh, have uh-huh. like to retire. So, I see. So, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, uh, in Germany, uh, clinic. But at that time, there was child, child, children's clinic. But I think the, uh, when we were examining Dr. Nar- uh, by learning Dr. Nabai's clinic and so and it is very important to follow the child case as adult cases. Right. And the uh, cases which the, the disease which might be occurred in the uh, uh, symptom in the uh, childhood, but uh, any reason who developed it uh, in the adulthood should be the, uh, examined uh, pediatrician because mm-hmm. who knows right. the development. So I make uh, uh, children uh, neurological clinic mm-hmm. because uh, uh, in other uh, uh, clinic or uh, hospital it is necessary to follow the children until the other cases. Ah, so, I see, right, right. So right. I make it one. Uh-huh. Right, and so uh, mm-hmm. at that, so then what year was that? That, that uh, what was the year exactly that you made your clinic? Uh, uh, 1973. 1973, yes. I see. So it was actually prior to the publications. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. And at that time, uh, also, uh, when examining the, the oldest case, the 51 cases, when uh, we, uh, I uh, very uh, uh, fascinating the, the clinical case. Before that time, I am very con- wondering about the development of uh, the dopamine system. Mm-hmm. So, Dr. Matthias, I found the Dr. Matthias report. Uh, he, uh, according to their report, the dopamine uh, neuron it shows the different uh, development in the pericardium and the terminal. Terminal tyrosine hydrocase high in the early childhood, uh, exponentially decreased, and the stational case around the, the late the teen to the 20th. While well, the uh, yeah, uh, the pericardium DH increased gradually uh, around uh, uh, 15. Uh, it was exceeds the levels of the terminal. Uh, so, and when we examined the, uh, the uh, for, uh, correlate the clinical course of the 51-year-old cases, it was uh, very uh, interesting because uh, the symptoms occurred eight years, the, uh, 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 in the, uh, appeared in the uh, dystonia of one leg, and, uh, but it expands to the other uh, all limbs until the 15th, and gradually tones increased until the 20th. But later, it was stationary. Mm-hmm. And uh, at the same time, the uh, uh, diurnal fluctuation is very active and uh, uh, apparent in, during that progression, but later it was uh, not in apparent. Uh, tremor appeared in the around that, uh, eight to ten years, and this progressed to the thirtieth, but later uh, seizure. Uh, this is uh, correlate uh, if the this uh, uh, the descending pattern of terminal. Uh, correlated in one terminal, and if it uh, uh, this disease uh, this uh, in this disease the uh, terminal TH follow this normal curve around uh, 20 percent of this one, this was very correlated. This one. Mm-hmm. And also we examined the uh, uh, sleep. We showed I showed the uh, I exam we examined the uh, uh, selective sleep deprivation. Uh, REM sleep deprivation and slow wave sleep deprivation. After REM sleep deprivation, no morning improvement occurred. But uh, after uh, uh, slow wave, the sleep stage four deprivation, uh, there occurred and more strength. Uh, when by examining the twi- uh, uh, EMG uh, polysomnography, twitch movement increased much more. Uh, this was uh, uh, in normal sleep. The deprivation of the slow wave sleep increased the twitch movement in sleep. Mm-hmm. So the physiological uh, pattern of the sleep is completely normal. And uh, it was only decreased the uh, twitch movement. 
and also uh, when we examined the normal cases and other cases of uh, this disease, we found the pitch movement of the uh, uh, REM sleep decreased with age, just follows the monkey at one. And uh, the, uh, this case shows follow the upper and around the lower levels of this one. Mm -hmm. And uh, when examining the uh, 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 nocturnal variation, the pitch movement in the uh, first REM and low and last REM in high, so incremental nocturnal variation. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, is also low, lowered uh, with age in this uh, case. And mm -hmm. this uh, in nocturnal variation, uh, nocturnal incremental variation, become in, uh, uh, decrease the grade with age. So uh, I think this, in this case, uh, the, there is no progress disorder, but only follow the low levels of the normal uh, age variation and normal diurnal fluctuation or nocturnal, um, uh, nocturnal but diurnal fluctuation. So uh, just to sort of uh, summarize, you were seeing more patients and you were looking at them very carefully clinically mm -hmm. and you were also trying to understand pathophysiologically yes. what the problem was. Yeah. So uh, since you were uh, doing this from your own clinic and mm -hmm. not at the university, mm -hmm. Uh, how were you able to uh, do these physiological studies? How, how did you work that out? Uh, yes, for somnography, we have done in our clinic. Mm -hmm. uh, and at first I uh, do it, uh, did it in Dr. Narabe's clinic mm -hmm. and later uh, in our clinic. And uh, we have, uh, fortunately, uh, 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 Brantan Sakkad is also very important to this one. And fortunately, uh, fortunately, we, uh, uh, one of the uh, famous neurophysiologists now, you know, uh, Okihide Hikosaka. Mm -hmm. Okihide Hikosaka can, uh, kindly come to our clinic and examine this uh, examination. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and also we, uh, the clinic is located very near to various uh, university, so we have good con con connection. Mm -hmm. uh, other uh, persons, uh, specialists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, at that point, uh, we mm -hmm. the, suggest uh, this disease is a, a terminal disease with decrease of tyrosine hydroxase is the main uh, the, uh, uh, main cause mm -hmm. of disease. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Obviously, when you published this in uh, the mid-1970s, mm -hmm. uh, other doctors around the world began to hear about it, mm -hmm. uh, and they also saw patients, I guess, uh, I see. fairly yeah. fairly soon. Yeah. Is that right? Uh, when did other people begin to find cases of this uh -huh. uh, illness as well? I see. Uh, after that, uh, soon after my publish in the uh, 1976, uh, uh, the uh, um, uh, Felix, uh, Felix doctor uh, found uh, the uh, recessive type of cigar disease. Mm -hmm. uh, this was uh, later in the recessive type in hydroxyl deficiency. Mm -hmm. But he said uh, this was uh, the owner of the, uh, Switzerland. Uh, so, uh, this there is a disease type, so uh, they, uh, he proposed the uh, nomenclature of Sega syndrome mm -hmm. at that time. So, so when did it first get the name of Sagawa's disease or Sagawa's syndrome? When did uh, yeah, Sega syndrome. When did people the, begin after, to call it? Yeah, after uh, the develop, uh, 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 discovery of the uh, gene. After the gene was found, gene. then it was yes, called yes. Uh, by your name. And, uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, before the gene, uh, we have a lucky that Dr. Uh, Shintab is a, a very uh, specialist of uh, mm -hmm. neurochemistry, mm -hmm. found uh, the partial deficiency of DTP cycle in one case of uh, this one. So mm -hmm. he, he said, he proposed several disease is uh, partial deficiency DTP cycle one. Mm -hmm. At that time, it was very uh, attractive, but 
uh, when we are examining the polysomnography, there is no abnormality of the pattern, uh, uh, parameters which relate to the serotonin and noradrenaline. So mm -hmm. uh, I am uh, 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 questionable where, whether this was a uh, 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 receptor, uh, GTP cycle has one deficiency or not. But uh, when uh, Dr. Furukawa at that time, who, who, uh, Dr. Narabai's uh, student, at that time, uh, which they are very interested in the examining the bioptimum uh, metabolism for juvenile Parkinsonism, mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, like I asked them seven cases of the cases, cerebrospinal uh, fluid, and they found that both bioptimum bioptimum decreased in no case. Mm -hmm. So I think this was the, the GTP cycle had a deficiency in our case. Mm -hmm. At, uh, uh, in the se uh, several months later, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Ichinose found the gene of GTP cycle had a one. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, at that time, the, uh, you know, the Mitsuo Yoshida, mm -hmm. uh, he was a professor of Japan, he uh, came home to me. And he said, your disease is uh, caused by the GP cycle at one deficiency? Yes. Uh, so, uh, but he said, Dr. Ichinose found the gene of it. And he had, is going to publish it, by, uh, it but soon, uh, so you should co work with my plans. So, I came on to Dr. Ichinose. Uh -huh. And it just came to me and uh, gathered that 13 uh, patient of this one. Uh -huh. like, and but found uh, uh, the uh, uh, GTP cycle of the deficiency. But uh, uh, yeah, mutation. GTP right, cycle. right. But it was already known that the GTP cyclohydrolase 1 was uh, absent or deficient in the patients before the gene was found. Yes. I see. Uh -huh. Right. So after right. that, this one. And that, uh, just uh, before this one, in the United States, uh, 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 in the doctors of the uh, European country uh, 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 accept our cases, but uh, your country, the United States, is not. But, uh -huh. uh, you know, uh, uh, particular uh, 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 two uh, 20 years old uh, sisters uh, who have the dystonia, uh -huh. and you said, this is the cigar type dystonia. <laughs> so <laughs> right, that's uh, right. that's they, that's they uh, can work. So we can dance. This was a Los Angeles Times was one. Mm -hmm. so after that, uh, you know, it's very uh, active work. And right. So they say that the nomenclature of dopamine response is dystonia. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the, at that time, we say the hairy type of dystonia, uh, but uh, uh, with this, no, because we can't accept that. <laughs> and so they are the Dutch process <laughs> dystonia. We right. can publish it in, uh, in Right, right. The, uh, the patients that uh, we saw at the National Institutes of Health mm. were uh, first uh, brought to us by Dr. John Fink. Yeah. And uh, he got interested also in biopterin metabolism. Yes. And uh, that was before the gene was identified. Mm. And uh, yes, I was. I was very excited uh, mm. to, to find that uh, patient. Uh, mm. I remember, actually, just, uh, just very briefly, uh, mm. I remember seeing your publication in 1976. Yes. Uh, I was a fellow with David Marsden at that uh -huh. time, and uh, he showed me the book uh, with your publication, and mm. I know that he was very interested in it. And uh, so that's how I learned about it. Mm. And uh, John Fink presented uh, such a patient to mm. us at our conference mm. at NIH. Mm. And, I, and I thought that that was the right diagnosis and then got him interested mm. in uh, doing further, uh -huh. further investigation I see. Uh, about it. Mm. So uh, yes, that's that's. <laughs> Thank you. It was very interesting. But after yeah. the uh, publication, Mm -hmm. uh, of this one, uh, there is uh, uh, many, uh, many uh, uh, phenotypical variation mm -hmm. uh, was clarified. Mm -hmm. uh, before that, 
uh, 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 we also found the another type of DOPA response disorder. Mm -hmm. uh, first type is uh, postural dystonia, mm -hmm. but the other type is uh, uh, dystonic movement, action retro cause and action dystonia. In that case, uh, polysomnographical findings are a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So we think this was another type of dystonia, mm -hmm. uh, which dismounted the Europa. But later, after the discovery of gene, we found the mutation of this case. Mm -hmm. This uh, so uh, it is uh, important how uh, how to explain this one. And this action type dystonia, uh, how many action types dystonia? There are focal dystonia, segmental dystonia, mm -hmm. and also have the Parkinsonian symptom. Very uh, 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 very typical variation is observed. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, uh, we should say, uh, 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 clearize or uh, why these variations occur. Mm -hmm. And at, uh, at first, uh, one colleagues of Japan with Nara University uh, examined the uh, gene uh, of this one, and uh, uh, abnormal uh, uh, mutated. Uh, uh, gene percentage of mutated gene against normal gene is differ uh, among, uh, depend on the mutation uh, of the gene. And though the mutation is uh, uh, identical in one family, these are different. And also in some family, even the uh, same gene, uh, same uh, mutation, the uh, date of the uh, mutated uh, date uh, against the normal gene is different among patients. This might be related to the uh, interfam interfamilial and also intrafamilial variation. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, and the, but in the uh, uh, in these cases, we are very attentive the in site. Uh, predominantly involved site, site of the uh, uh, stemenokinomas uh, uh, and extremities, site of the muscle tone uh, abnormality. Uh, because uh, why we uh, attended the stemenokinomas, this also comes from the Narvaez clinic. Mm -hmm. In Narvaez clinic, is uh, to, uh, to make a target of the cellotactic operation it was uh, whether hypertonus of uh, stenocytomastitis, which uh, they had hot discussion whether this is ipsilateral or maybe contralateral. So uh, at that time, the, if uh, the sun region is occurred uh, in the afferent area of the stenocytomastitis, uh, you know, it was uh, the stereonuclear so is ipsilateral, but uh, it was uh, uh, down, uh, striatum or uh, uh, the uh, downstream of the striatum. This was contralateral. Mm -hmm. So we uh, also we are um, very uh, taking care of the side predominance of this stereonuclear mastitis and extremities. Mm -hmm. The partial type. The hypertonus is contralateral between the stereotypes and extremities. Mm -hmm. While the action type or the tremor, it is ipsilateral. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, torticolis, which occurred in the action type, is a sign of torticolis, is ipsilateral to the side of uh, the extremities uh, predominantly involved. Mm -hmm. So the region might be the downstream of the uh, striatum. So, uh, the, but these were DOPA responsive. So, uh, I think this might be a nigrostriatum uh, DOPA neuron projecting to the um, subsolomic nucleus, mm -hmm. which is proposed by Dr. Walter's group. We think, I think this might be the name of this one. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Let me just ask you about a few other things so mm -hmm. we can uh, uh, sort of broaden the discussion a little bit. <laughs> Uh, about how many patients have you seen with this disease now uh, over the years? How many, oh. how many patients have you? Yes, uh, with this? the improved patient. Mm -hmm. I, on my personal case is uh, 45 cases. 45 cases. Mm -hmm. And you have continued to follow them from childhood to, to yes, adult, adult life. Food, yeah. Yes, right. I remember visiting your clinic once and saw some mm -hmm. of your patients that had mm -hmm. yes. had had been treated for mm. many years. Yeah. And my understanding is that uh, with just a little bit of levodopa, they continue to be very well for many years. Yes. How many years now have you been following uh, some of the patients? Uh, 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 I just for do, you still, do you still see that first patient from 1970? Or? Yes. Uh -huh. I see. And how is she doing? She is very well. Uh -huh. Yeah. And when uh, 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 we have uh, children, um, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and uh, uh, but uh, yes, more than uh, forty years is more. Mm -hmm. yes, more yeah. Similar. Do they ever develop levodopa dyskinesias? No, no uh -huh. case shows. Uh -huh. But the uh, action type shows that if we use this one at the field, they show the short time dyskinesia. Uh, uh, movement or aggravation of the action type. But after decrease of this one, uh, and we, uh, in, in then follow uh, again the uh, introduce the developer with tiny increment, mm -hmm. no abnormality of that. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So now let's talk about some of your other interests. Uh, uh, you have obviously been very interested in Sagawa disease, uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, which is a very interesting story. Yeah, yeah. But I know that you have uh, seen a large number of patients. Ah, yes, uh, yes. You have a yeah. very big clinic. Yeah, I see. Yeah, very yeah, near yeah. kind. But yeah. before uh, that one, I, uh, yeah. when considering the Sega disease, it is, uh, we found uh, another uh, interesting thing. I mean, the rationale of the movement disorder is that the certain region of the vesera ganglia uh, developed the symptoms on the uh, structure, downstream structure of this one, which is normally active. Mm -hmm. So in the development of uh, the brain, it is necessary to uh, f uh, the downstream uh, structure is uh, matured in certain levels. So uh, this uh, relates to the development of the posture dystonia, which de de depend on uh, involves the down, uh, the descending pathway of the basal ganglia occurred before 10 years, but uh, those who uh, uh, involve the ascending pathway is later uh, appeared uh, after 15 or maybe many other days. Uh, this uh, differs from the postural type and the actual type. And postural type is, so to say, uh, hypokinetic disorder. Mm -hmm. But the action type, as the region is subthermic nucleus, it was a hyperkinetic disorder. The Parkinson's feature appeared in the uh, uh, action dystonia is a uh, uh, Parkinson's hyperkinetic disorder. It was quite different from this one. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, uh, and also, another interesting is one that this region does not cause any morphological abnormality at all. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the symptoms uh, are always re responsive to one. But the uh, action type, if you use the uh, levodopa, this uh, uh, acting in the D2 receptors, uh, suppressor, subthalamic nucleus. So this was not smart either. But uh, before 10 years, so we have 15 or so, uh, the D2 receptor is not so much uh, uh, development. This dopa is good. But after that, uh, the, uh, some an agonist, particularly uh, D1 or D3 agonist, is necessary to use this one. Mm -hmm. And another thing is that all of them is, uh, pro this was no problem, but it should use uh, the modopa. But in these cases, the dopamine activity of the pericardium is normal. So uh, there might be a, a particular descending pathway or uh, in, in this terminal mm -hmm. region. <laughs> this must be uh, the problem. Mm -hmm. which might be clear yeah, later. Yeah. 
So it's uh, very, very instructive how you went from seeing the first patients to understanding the mm -hmm. clinical manifestations to trying to understand mm -hmm. the basic biochemistry mm -hmm. to the genetics mm -hmm. and then going back to understanding yes. the exact pathophysiology yes. of all the clinical manifestations. Yes. So you have been uh, very interested in all the different aspects <laughs> I of, see. of this yes. as yes. Uh, as you have gone on in your yeah. career. But let's, uh, uh, because we don't have uh, a lot more time, let uh -huh. me just uh, just uh, get, get some further sense of some of the other uh, things other that you, things have you have done. How large a clinic do you have? How many, uh, how many patients do you see there every week, for example? Uh, every week is so, so high, but uh, we have the particular station, we have more than 1,000 curates in Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, mass telegraphs is a very uh, high problem because mass telegraphs in Japan is the highest peak in the, and uh, uh, three years is the highest peak. Mm -hmm. This depends on the uh, 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 particular pattern of HL antlets, mm -hmm. which we found this one, this one. Mm -hmm. and also we have the uh, infantile autism and the death syndrome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in day two, the dopamine is one. There is a uh, death syndrome and infantile spasms, death syndrome, and also curate is very important. In, if mm -hmm. in these cases, the, the decrease of dopamine is, uh, follows the dopamine receptor upward regulation. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly infantile autism and death syndrome, it was occurred. But this was a decrease of dopamine in the pericardium which uh, we have consideration is caused by the abnormality of the locomotion or abnormality of the uh, high, uh, uh, the, uh, abnormality in development of the anti-gravity activity. Uh, this caused uh, the uh, failure to restrict the atonia in REM sleep. Mm -hmm. This may cause the dysfunction of the multi tegmental nucleus uh, which cause dysfunction of the dopamine neuron. Mm -hmm. uh, very severe case is a uh, red syndrome, mm -hmm. which shows the abnormality of dopamine uh, in, in the uh, substance nigra. The physiology, uh, chemistry shows a decrease of tyrosine hydroxylase without any uh, reliable imputation. This was uh, quite similar to the extra. Uh, uh, the experimental reason of the pedangopontan nuclei, uh, which causes uh, uh, him in Parkinson's, is uh, the pathophysiology quite similar. But uh, one case, which we, uh, we uh, so we trained the locomotion very much. So the one case which died, uh, the 32, we, uh, so, uh, uh, the, so the uh, death syndrome became Parkinson's disease from around 30 years. Uh, but uh, the one case which we trained at locomotion and died at 32 uh, with another uh, reason, uh, the, the nigra is completely normal. Mm -hmm. So locomotion or these uh, 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 yeah, uh, postural tone is a very important one. Okay. And also uh, the uh, such abnormality uh, caused uh, uh, dopamine. Uh, uh, upward regression. This was, uh, this uh, uh, open upward regression occurred in the development time is not a denervation upward regression, but what is a compensatory upward regression. For this, uh, to use the uh, antagonist is compliant indication. Mm -hmm. uh, we use the low dose of brain dose of that 0 0.5 milligram per kilogram per day brain dose mm -hmm. improves this one and then improve mm -hmm. transmission. So mm -hmm. we Use this one. Right. This, this right. was a uh, very interesting one. Right. And also, for the uh, everyone, uh, on this depend, I like to work the sleep waking cycle and also locomotion. That sleep waking cycle has uh, three epochs and four, four months, uh, uh, until four months, circadian session, four months to six, uh, another six years uh, to restrict the uh, daytime sleep. Uh, in the afternoon, once in the afternoon, and then five to six years, uh, complete uh, to one monocycle mm -hmm. of
Yeah. So again, let me ask you some more about your clinic. Yes. I know that Dr. Nomura yes. is uh, helping you in the clinic. Yes. How long has she been with you? Uh, she's more, more than 30 years. Uh-huh. Yes. yes. Uh, is there anyone else who helps you in the clinic? Yes, well? uh, many. Uh, uh, well, five doctors? Six, well, five, uh, every time, six uh, doctors uh, partly uh, attend. Uh-huh. Uh, recently, uh, Japanese uh, uh, education system is uh, Change so uh, when a doctor, a young doctor, if he trained in our clinic, it was not uh, uh, accepted as trained uh-huh. because we have no uh, neuropathological department. I see. <laughs> so, uh-huh. Uh-huh. I see. Right. 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 Uh, so uh, you are still working full time in your clinic? Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you're enjoying your practice, I can see. Oh uh, yes. Yes. Uh, Good. So uh, let me ask you a, a few other things. Yes. Um, uh, you have been a member of the Movement Disorder Society from the beginning, I guess. Is that yes. right? Uh, and you have been to most of the meetings? Yeah, uh, most of the meeting. Yes. Uh, depending on my clinic for condition on the other conference, uh, but uh, uh, I, yes. uh-huh. I might attend. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, in terms of advice, to give to uh, new doctors, uh-huh. uh, what would you tell them? Uh, as someone who is interested in medicine mm, or uh, interested in neurology, what what sort of advice would you give them about what they uh-huh. should do in the future? Yes, uh, precise clinical examination is very important. If the neurophysiology, neuropathology, and the neuroimaging study is very uh, advanced, but it is very necessary to how uh, uh, this one is involved uh, is uh, clinical examination. But clinical examination considering uh, the neuron pathway or the neurons uh, mm-hmm. affecting is very important. Mm-hmm. And as for the pediatrician, pediatric neurologist, very important one: the human brain is only one brain which has uh, established. Uh, the lower uh, uh, neuron mm-hmm. uh, modulates the higher cortical function completely. Mm-hmm. So it is very important to consider the lower motor neuron, but particularly uh, the brain uh, neuron or the neuron with the brain stem and the middle brain uh, mm-hmm. is how it active in this one. Uh, mm-hmm. So development of the, this neurons uh, in uh, particular uh, epochs, and each epoch have the particular uh, uh, goals for development of particular part of the brain. Mm-hmm. So, the, uh, as I said, the neuron which involved in the circadian oscillation in four months and four months uh, to make the uh, it has advanced in the uh, uh, daytime in the until the one and six years, one year and six months, and f- uh, the complete circadian oscillation in the si- four and six months is quite different mm-hmm. uh, 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 neuron, even the neuron cell brain. And also, the, in this part, the development of the anti gravity mass in, uh, activates the dopamine neuron. This dopamine neuron is not completely different from this one. Mm-hmm. So it is very important for a child neurologist to check this one. Mm-hmm. It right. is really so uh, over the course of your mm. work in neurology over the years, mm. what would you say is the most remarkable advance uh, in the field? Uh, from the time that you started until now, what do you think is the most interesting thing that has happened to to the neurological field. Uh, I mean, there have been so I many see. advances and so many things that have happened. What I, I must, uh, it was uh, uh, the things which I, I must only buy, I, I must I, um, consider and uh, believe, but the other one, uh, to make them believe uh, to others is not not yet. But uh, with this uh, consideration of the lower brain, it, it uh, develops the higher cortical function. Uh, in this idea, we can prevent the development of infantile autism mm-hmm. and uh, so make the most of the Down syndrome patient 
the entering the high school or uh, junior university. I and see. also uh -huh. uh, the most of the Tourette syndrome patient so to say make a great person the Tourette patient persons uh, parents uh, 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 patients uh, uh, association said we are great person but uh, if we uh, do it in the such one so, so the train the uh, true uh, uh, locomotion with upright position and complete late night cycle and uh, encourage them to work much harder mm -hmm. in the early childhood, late childhood early uh, primary school ages mm -hmm. we can prevent this one. I see. So you, uh, as you're looking forward then in the field, you yes. can see that there yes. are going to be some very interesting advances yes. that are coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So is there anything else that you would like to uh, uh, tell us about uh, in, in terms of your own career or your interests uh, that, uh, that you would like to say that we haven't discussed already? Uh, you've already mm -hmm. told us a lot about uh, the way that you think about things. Uh, I think so, most of them I did, but uh, I think from the uh, uh, as a child neurologist, we must, uh, as I said, we must uh, to check the development precisely mm -hmm. and uh, check it in the uh, uh, RE uh, stage, that is, uh, uh, during the epoch of the development of the uh, amenagic neuron. Uh, mm -hmm. If so, uh, we, if at that time, uh, as the serotonin neuron, the particular serotonin neuron is an environmental related uh, one, a moderated one, so uh, the only the, uh, uh, moderation of the environment can improve or uh, 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 prevent the abnormal development of dysfunction or abnormal disease. Right. So I can see that the fundamental message that you want to convey is mm. that uh, if mm. you want to be a good physician, that you have to look very, very carefully at the patients, understand mm. exactly what the problem is, and then try to mm. dissect pathophysiologically what mm. is happening, mm. and that maybe someone else will be able to make a new discovery just as you have done, yeah. a very important one indeed. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Well, very good. Thank you very much for telling us about uh, mm -hmm. about your life and how you have gotten interested in Sagawa's disease and uh, how your work has really moved the field uh, from the very beginning uh, all the way to our current state of knowledge now. Thank so, you very much. Again, thank you. Yes, thank you. A pleasure. All of them depend on you. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Thank you very much. So this is the end of the interview.